Well, welcome to question three at the end of chapter eight in Fundamentals of Particle Technology, which is all about centrifuges. Uh, if you had a look at question two first, you would have noticed that it was um, something to do with what we call sigma process. So uh, we put in a P at the end of the sigma in order to demonstrate that that's process. And the equation for sigma process is the volume flow rate meters cubed per second divided by the terminal settling velocity of the particle of interest. And that was a 10 micron particle in uh, question two. OK, so none of those terms just here on, the, on this side of the equation have anything to do with the centrifuge, really, because that is the throughput. And that could be a gravity settling basin throughput or it could be a centrifuge throughput. So there's nothing intrinsically centrifugy about Q, and there is definitely nothing intrinsically centrifugy about the terminal settling velocity of a particle of a certain size. So we call that sigma process, because that's what the process actually gives you. If you run the centrifuge, you can actually work out that for a certain rotation speed, it gives you this particular result, is the best way of looking at that. It's something you can empirically find out from, from operating the centrifuge. Now we're talking here about um, the machine itself. OK, um, I'm, I'm not doing the der derivation of sigma process and sigma uh, machine. They're in the book. You can have a look at them in fundamentals. We're just using the equations. So let's look at the a centrifuge, because that probably helps, because we have a few concepts to um, to look at here. So if we consider a centrifuge and just checking that it actually recycles. No, we want to have it recycling. Oh, I'll tell you what, I'll just put it on. OK, so we have our particles coming in. The particle here is our critical particle because it starts at the inner radius, the liquid radius, and is captured just before it, just before it uh, would otherwise have left the machine. So again, it's like a critical particle trajectory analysis. Particles the same size coming in at a lower height will be captured earlier on in the device. So that's our critical trajectory. Here is an airspace inside the centrifuge. Um, and one thing that I desperately need to uh, explain is the pool, what's called the pool. The pool is the liquid volume between what's il illustrated here as R1 and R2. So it's the region where the particles are actually flowing, not including the airspace. OK, so we come to that centrifuge pool in a moment in, in uh, part two. So let's um, do some calculations. It, again, it starts fairly straightforwardly, this question, because we're told that the centrifuge is operating at 1800 RPM, and we need to convert that into a rotational speed. So we need to divide by 60. That's revolutions per minute. So uh, we need to... Um, 1800 rpm uh, okay so we need a revolution which is 2 pi so that's 1800 times by 2 times by 3.14 okay and then divide by 60 gives us the um, well the radian per second which in fact is per second in SI units and that is answer A. The rotational speed then is 190, near enough, radians per second. Now, here's the volume of the centrifuge pool. Um, I will actually just move this up a little bit to help with the calculation here. Um, why are we calculating the volume of the centrifuge pool? Because the equation for sigma machine, what I have down here, doesn't appear to have the volume in it. Well, yes, it does, 
because this is the volume of the centrifuge pool. I could actually take that out and substitute in big capital V for volume. So in other words, we need R naught squared minus R, uh, the inner um, radius squared, I'm calling that the, the liquid radius really, and times by the length. So the outer radius of the centrifuge um, okay length and diameter the diameter is 0 0.75 and the pool depth is 0 0.1 okay so you've got to really interpret the, the this data I can just leave it on there okay so the diameter is 0 0.75 of a meter that's the important thing that means the outer um, radius is going to be half that so the volume of the pool is going to be I'll make that V equals the outer radius which is 0 0.375 meters because it's half of the 0 0.75 meters and then the inner radius is 0 0.1 meter less than that so that's going to be 0 0.2 seven five all squared um, we are going to need the pi as well because it's the volume of the so actually I ought really to have extended this beyond there so that's that's the volume uh, once we multiply it by the length which is 1.5 meters 1.5 so the volume of the pool starting to get a little bit complicated for the um, for the calculator so let's um, pull up the spreadsheet and take that down to something whoops didn't mean to do that take that down to something a bit smaller okay so the centrifuge volume is going to be equal to pi times open brackets 0.375 squared minus 0.275 function squared times by 1.5. So that is 0.31 if we're going to go to the nearest. If we're going to go to um, two significant figures, so the volume of the centrifuge pool is 0 0.31 uh, meters cubed. Good. So the sigma value for the machine, bearing in mind we I'll tell you what, I'll bring the spreadsheet over to the other side. So the sigma value for the machine then, because. Uh, we need to multiply the volume of the machine, which we just calculated there, times by the rotational speed squared, which is 190, 190, all squared. Then we need to divide by g. Strange to see g in a centrifuge equation, but it's it's arrived in the derivation. Um, G was multiplied on both sides of the equation in order to get the value of ut for process sigma. Um, so it, it's, it's there, it genuinely is there. So that's 9.81 times by the natural log ratio of the radii, which was 0.375 0.375 divided by 0.275 so that closes the natural log and that closes the division so with a bit of luck we get a value that's um, that's there uh, 3600 as it happens plus 24 but um, 3600 is close enough so uh, to two significant figures sigma machine value is 3600 now that's interesting because the 
sigma value on the previous machine wasn't 3,600. Uh, it was 920, I think, something along those lines. So we need to compare these two sigmas together in order to work out the efficiency. From the design of the machine, because these are all elements from the design of the machine, these are all physical elements of the centrifuge. How big it is, therefore the volume, how fast you spin it round, uh, the radii, plus OK, a constant. So these are all things that you get from the machine, from the design of it. And that should give a sigma machine value of 3,600. But the sigma process value, but sigma process was only equal to, uh, I think it was 920. I haven't looked that one up, I'm afraid. So it might be a little bit out. So that means we're actually only getting in practice that efficiency which means that we only have 920 divided by 3600 a machine that is round about 26 percent efficient because that is 0 0.26 0 0.26 or 26 percent efficient which is not terribly efficient, but if you think about it, there's a lot of moving parts in a centrifuge which could cause uh, recirculation zones and turbulence. Uh, and that means that the particles are less likely to be um, separated as we would desire onto the surface of the centrifuge basin. So it's 26% efficiency. Um, if we were going to take into account the efficiency in a sigma equation then we would simply just add the efficiency in here so that would be 0 0.26 and then we certainly wouldn't really expect sigma process to be a uh, sigma process to be equal to 100% of the sigma machine value. Values something around, around about the 30% are, generally speaking, what, what is obtained. Okay, that's the end of question three, which really is hand-in-hand uh, -hand with question two on centrifuges.